Hello and welcome to this review of the Tevo Tarantula 2017 model. Now, I've had a little bit of a look online and I couldn't find any specific things to the 2017 model and the updates that they've got, so I decided to make this video just to show you what's going on, what's different in the package, and my sort of view of it from the point of somebody who's never had a 3D printer before and who has just built this one. So I'm going to go through the upgrades in this particular version, then the problems I've had, then the good points to this model and I'll put a little link just now on the screen if you want to skip straight to the end and, and see the summary. So the first upgrade, the Tevo Tarantula comes with a new extruder. Now it still has the old extruder and there is some interesting issues that I'll get to that in the problem section but it has a brand new extruder. Um, it still comes with the two rolls of filament however this is massively deceiving as far as I'm concerned. Because a lot of the advertising, and if you look at other reviews, it says that it comes with two rolls of filament. It doesn't. There are two physical rolls. However, they're both 200 grams each, which means combined, they are less than a half roll. Obviously, um, filament comes in one kilogram or 500 gram sizes. Both of these combined are 400 grams, so it's less than a normal roll. However, it is enough to get you up and running. Some of the reviews have also mentioned that you get a roll of ABS and PLA. I didn't. I got two rolls of PLA and they were particularly weird. Neither of them could be printed without any bed temperature. I had to raise the bed temperature to 60 degrees to get either of them to stick for more than the first two layers. So there was a bit of an issue there. And even when I had it set too high, they were still dragging them off. There was just no adhesion to the build surface. With temperature, absolutely fine. Without, eh, it's a bit weird. The rest of the print setup is nice and simple. You have single motor for X, Y and Z and another motor for the extruder. It's a Bowden style extruder. It has basic fan setup. The power box does not have a cover on it. So you are going to have to wire up live mains if you're buying this kit. But I'm imagining if you're buying a kit, you're pretty okay with this. If you're not okay with this, then do not come anywhere near this. Now... Into the problems. The first problem that I had was two of the bags were missing. As I was building this, as you can see just now, I went through the bag step by step and I realised that two of them were missing. Luckily, I had one of the lead screws that actually came off a washing machine from years ago. I have a big load of random stuff in the garage. So I managed to use that and the other bag contained the nuts that have the Z axis or the axis sensors, the stop sensors. And I managed to put together everything using spare parts that I had. I got into contact with TiVo. They asked me to send them a picture of the bags that I had missing, which is always interesting. And when I asked them to clarify, because obviously not having the bags, I can't take a picture of bags that are missing, I didn't get a response back. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to send me out the spare parts, because it would be nice to have them. Um, but I managed to make do. And this comes into the quality control. Yeah, if you've got missing parts, then it's not particularly good. The next issue that I had is that the lead screw that controls the Z-axis, that's the up and down, uh, was bent. Um, straight out of the box, it had a noticeable kink in it. It seems to be working okay with the setup I've got. It squeaks like nothing on earth, but that could be the fact that I've got a slightly different screw that's come off a washing machine that looks to be the same diameter, but it could be slightly off. But yeah, it shouldn't have a kink in it, which is kind of annoying, but manageable. The next issue I want to talk about is the manual. The manual is good for the first quarter and then all of a sudden some of the pictures go out of sync and the pictures are basically repeating themselves and you're left wondering where to put things because it says how to mount something but without the picture you can't actually see where you're going to mount it. It creates a bit of a problem and if you don't have a sort of working knowledge of building things, this essentially is a deal breaker. You should not get this printer if you can't work out these things on your own. Um, it shows you on the instructions exactly where to put the end stop switch for the Y axis, but it doesn't show you the X or the Z axis. Um, as you can see here on the instructions, this is where the Y axis is. The Z axis isn't there, um, and neither is the X axis. Now, I managed to work out where the X axis goes because there's two little screw holes for it. However, the Z is a mount that you fit, and I still don't know if I've got it in the right place, but it seems to work for what I'm doing. Right, so the last problem that I've got is the extruder. So it comes with a new Titan extruder, but it also has the old one, which is easily assembled. Now, because the new one is new, I put the new one onto it. And it has a little pamphlet of instructions that aren't in the main set 
of how to mount it. However, what they do not say, and none of the documentation says this whatsoever, is that you will have to reprogram the main board to get this to work. So the new extruder runs backwards um, compared to the old one. So what you have to do is you have to get the source code off of GitHub that somebody wrote to update this thing because it's not on any of the normal websites. It's not on anything related to TiVo. Some random guy wrote new instructions for it. You have to download that uh, programming code off of GitHub. You need to download the Arduino program and then you need to use the Arduino program to upload the code onto your uh, onto your board controller. The problem with this is that you also need to make changes to it. You need to go through the code. So if you don't really know what you're doing with coding, it's going to be very difficult for you. Luckily for me, I've done a little bit of this in the past, so it was easy enough to go through, change the parameters for the size of the bed, change the parameters for the way that the motor drives on the, the feeder, and fix this. But for anybody with no experience whatsoever, this, again, is another deal breaker. This is a serious problem. So, with that out of the way, that is all of the problems. So, I want to tell you why this is a good kit for certain people. Now, if you have any sort of inclination towards engineering, if you've pulled things apart to look at how they work, if you built them back together, if you have basic coding ideas from school, that's all you really need. This is a great kit. Now, the quality control is a problem. So if you want a printer that arrives and you are immediately printing with it, no chance. This took me a day and a half to build and get ready to the point where I could print my first thing. There was another six hours on top of that for me to actually fine tune the bed enough because I didn't have any knowledge or leveling instructions. I was using a piece of paper to try and level it. And yeah, it took me six hours before I got my first decent print out of this thing. Um, after the day and a half building it but it is a very interesting kit i think this thing is brilliant it does have glaring faults as i've already outlined the open mains from the power supply is a bit of a problem however if you go into thingiverse you'll find a lot of solutions for a lot of the problems with this um, the frame isn't particularly stable but there are brackets that you can print out to stabilize it um, it doesn't have a spool holder but as you've seen just there i printed one it was one of the first things that i printed was the spool holder and little adjustment knobs to make but uh, leveling the bed easier um, and i love the idea that you can use the printer to print things that the printer needs to upgrade itself, which is just brilliant for me. Um, the filament isn't really enough to get into anything serious, so you will need to buy a proper roll of filament. But for setting up, it gives you enough to print every, everything that you sort of need. Um, I wouldn't recommend this for anybody that has children roaming about because the open power at the back is a problem. One of the first things that you should print is a cover for that. I actually haven't printed one yet, but I don't have children running about the house. Um, so once I got it running, as you can see here, I printed some parts, printed some upgrades. If you want to start doing things with, uh, just doing things that run a bit better, you want to immediately upgrade your fan so that you've got blown air that cools down your plastic quicker so you can do bridging and things like this. I printed one out that was meh but that allowed me to print one that was slightly better and just slowly upgrade my way through as you can see here i still had a few little problems with stringing um, but i managed to go through it piece by piece um, and improve it and it was just working out the right settings for the pla that came with the machine now since i've changed it to something else it works a lot better i printed a cooler as you can see um, I printed a cooler first so that I could print a better cooler, attached this, then used this to print some of the tests. I did Benchy and then a little pillows thing to test for stringing. This little Benchy that you can see here was actually printed with 2mm retraction. and It was okay but as you can see there's still a bit of stringing. After that I went on to do a little torture test for stringing specifically and I printed it with 5mm retraction and 0.2mm coasting and I managed to solve those problems entirely. After that I did a little lattice torture test that everybody knows by now and all of the results were quite nice. As you can see here, 
Torch of Test looking lovely. One little piece of string in. I do have an issue on the base, but that was because the actual bed was too close to the nozzle. So it was kind of smooshing out the first layer. But aside from that, it seems to be working quite fine. I managed to print this little Torch of Test. And I shrunk it down just to see how well it would do with the, the tiny limits. But it seemed to handle it fine. So, in summary, the problems that I've had are outweighed by how good it is. However, not getting the parts that were supposed to be in the box is a major problem. The fact that I'm still waiting for Tevo to get back to me to supply me those parts is an issue. Luckily, I had them on hand from something else and I managed to make it work anyway. But it, it is a worry. So, if you want to get something out of the box and be printing with it on the same day or even a day later, I'd be wary of it. Um, the delivery time for me getting this off of Gearbest was about three and a half weeks. Um, so not a great delivery time, but it was over the Christmas period, so you got to give them a little bit of leeway. Having said that, it is a good gateway into 3D printing. Um, it teaches you a lot about how the machines are built, even teaches you about the code behind it, because if you use a new extruder, you have to get a little bit into the programming. So it will teach you a little bit more while you're trying to get this working, which I think is a good thing. So I hope all of that information is useful to you. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave comments. If you liked the video, free, feel free to put a thumbs up. I really don't mind subscribers or any of that stuff. I do this for a laugh. But thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.